think I would introduce him as um, a very successful businessman, a man that loved people. He loves his work. He um, he's just all all around fabulous man. As far as everyone that we meet in life uh, has a certain amount of influence on us and what we do. And if I had to to pick a person that has had the greatest positive influence on my life, a person with whom I'm acquainted, I would have to say that it's Clifton Chalk, and I would have to thank him for that influence. Uh, the policy that Clifton has got is that he will just loan you anything that he's got. Give you anything he's got. If he thinks you want it and uh, he can get something else, he'd give it to you. He's that kind of a person. That would be my main thing. If I had to say that, I knew that would be the last thing that I'd say. I'd say, you're missing too much church and you need to be with the people in that church because that's where your, that's where your respect and where your uh, seniority in serving the Lord has been in our church and it's where the people look up to you and it's where you've got a certain amount of prestiges in our church and you're gone too much from our church. You miss too many services. And I would say that you need to be in the church. That would be about it. Clifton, you've lived a long time, and you've helped a lot of people, and you've given to a lot of people, and you've extended yourself personally to a lot of people. But for the remaining years of your life, I would say this to you, live your life for yourself. Do things for yourself. Make yourself happy. Enjoy your life. And, and, and allow yourself to be fulfilled in your, in your life. If you're going to make one more generosity, yeah. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> Clifton has always been, I feel, one of the most upright men all my life I ever met in all these years. And uh, has been uh, where I've seen a, a father, a husband, Never saw a mark against him. So if I was going, if he'd run for president, I guess I'd vote for him. <laughs> the last thing that I was going to ever say to him, it would be, Clifton, if you would work with me, we would accomplish more for God than, than you have any idea, according to my opinion of what you're doing. find Clifton Chalk to be a real Christian, a real man that has a concern for other people, and a real desire to make other people feel good in life. So that would be uh, an expression of Clifton, a giving person that never quits giving. Well, Clifton has always been a person that was there when you needed him. In, in my relationship with Clifton, if you had a problem or if you needed him for anything, he would always be there. Well, I would say to him, I'd say, Clifton, you, in my opinion, you have been really a friend and a wonderful brother-in-law to me. If I had to describe Clifton to someone, I would describe Clifton like this. He's one of the most progressive people I've ever met. That is, he's always open to new ideas. He's got one of the most positive attitudes of anyone I've ever met, and one of the most generous people I've ever met. There's nothing he would he would not do for you if you asked him, never. And uh, that's how you would describe him. But you can't go around describing him like that, or people would be all around his house asking him for things, I guess. And if I ever had, if I had one last thing to say to Clifton, if this was the last opportunity I ever had to say to you, it would be this. Clifton, if this was the last thing I had to say to you, it is this. Keep your positive mental attitude, because that's number one, just like you. And keep your generosity up, no matter what anybody says, because as you know, what goes around comes around. And what you put into this life, you get back. I would say, uh, God bless you and your lovely family. And uh, I'm glad that 
my life has been intertwined with your life, and uh, we've been friends for all these years. Well, I'd like to see him uh, keep his health, uh, take a lot of uh, his weight and his health and things like that. I'd, I'd like to see him uh, keep that so that he could enjoy the years of life that he has left now. I think his direction, as far as doing good, he's going to always do that. I think he would probably have to do that in order to be happy. I don't think he could be. Uh, I think he is happy when he does that. But mainly his health. I think he. I think he's always going to help people. Uh, but I'd like to see him help. I sure would thank you for giving me that five off. Dad is the kind of person that likes enjoys doing other things for other people. If he can if he can do something for other person he'll do it. And he, he that's you know he, he loves to do stuff for other people. If he can help you he's always he's always been real sensitive when it comes to uh, someone being sick or injured or something like that. I know if one of the children now you know stumped their toe or something like that, he's got his band-aids uh, you know, wrapping them up. Uh, you know, if my grandmother's sick, he's always over there with the blood pressure kit. But he's been been a very uh, sympathetic person toward the injured and sick. And then giving, he gives a lot. Uh, he's, you know, well, he's gave me a lot of stuff. He gave it to a lot of people, too. Thank you for all you've done. I realize now what you've done for me, you know, and maybe I wasn't as appreciative in the earlier years that I am now. And I realize the feelings that a father has for his children. And I think, I don't think anyone loves his children more than dad, unless it's me. <laughs> Clifton is one of the best people that I know of. He's, uh, he's thoughtful, he's kind, he's giving, and um, he's just a real good person. Of course, it goes without saying that I love him, and I'd be completely lost without him. And uh, I just hope he's around for a long, long time. Grandpa, I love you. <laughs> Say, hey, pal. Hey, pal. Say it in here. Say it right here. Hey, pal. Hey, pal. I love you. Hey, pal. Hey, pal. I love you. Hey, pal. Hey, pal. Hey, pal. Say, I love you. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Say, I, tell, tell, tell Eddie I love you. Hey, hey. Blow me a kiss. What does a tiger say? What does a hey, what does a tiger say? Hi, Channel. Say what? Say what? Yeah. Papa, I love you. What does the kitty cat say? Meow. What does the dog say? <laughs> what does the lion say? <laughs> What's the tiger say? <laughs> I love you. You're my favorite grandpa. And that's all. was the bleak month of January in the year of 28. A newborn came into this world in Carolina's honored state. In a humble country farmhouse, a new life had begun as Elmer and Annie Chalk looked upon their infant son. We suppose they might have wondered as parents have done before. Where would his footsteps lead him? What would his life hold in store? Would he walk a straight and narrow path or 
would he go astray, not knowing that his destiny lay many miles away. But it was there upon the farm he spent his boyhood days, doing chores they cast upon him. He learned the farmer's ways, always smiling, always friendly. He had his boyhood dreams, sometimes wild among the cornfields, the woodlands, and the streams. When 1940 came around with war clouds overhead, the family left the farmlands and found the city life instead. There he and his brother Lloyd rode through the streets of Norfolk Town on their bikes to make deliveries, a job they had found. They moved to Broad Creek Village, a home remembered still. When Brother Lloyd was called into service, it was a void that he must fill. But he never shirked his duty. His will was firm and strong. He found work in a naval base to help the family along. When his school days were over, he stood there a determined youth and vowed to be successful in what endeavor he would choose. Searching always for a better life than he had known before, but his work was interrupted. Bad tidings were in store. That awful Asian war came around and he was called away. He left his footprints on foreign lands, but never went astray. He faced the bitter cold and rain, but did the best he could and led his homesick comrades in Christian brotherhood. Returning home, he once again gathered up the loose strings of his life. It was then he met his Esther, and she became his loving wife. Three children came to bless their home, and four grandchildren too. Though great success has come his way, he's still the man we always knew. Ever honest, always upright, a trait we all should learn. Always giving of himself and asking nothing in return. His footsteps never wavering down the long path he has trod, a life that's dedicated to the service of his God. So here's to you, dear Clifton, and to the years that lie in store, to the many blessings you have known. May there be many more. We gather here to honor you for the man that you have been, a Christian, a husband, a father, 